In this video, we're going to look at DaVinci Resolve's audio normalization feature on the Deliver page, introduced in version 18.6. We'll discuss what normalization is, how it works, and why you might want to use it. You'll find this new feature in the Audio tab on the Delivery page. To enable audio normalization, check Normalize Audio and choose the standard that you want to use to normalize your audio. Now that we know where to find the tool, let's talk about how it works. Audio normalization is the process of applying gain or attenuation to an audio recording to adjust its volume to a target or normal level. Here's a typical example. Let's say I've set the target volume at negative 14 dBFS. If I had a super quiet recording, normalization would increase its volume until the loudest sound in that recording measures negative 14. If I had a super loud recording, normalization would decrease its volume until the loudest sound is negative 14. But it gets a little more complicated than that because there's different ways to measure the volume of an audio recording. A typical volume meter measures the peak intensity of a sound. Let me give you an example. Most audio that video editors work with is broken up into 48,000 samples per second. If just one single sample of that audio is super loud, a peak meter will report that level, even if every other sample in the measured range is super quiet peak meters are super useful when recording and editing audio. For example, when recording a sound because your priority is to avoid clipping the signal. However, peak meters are less helpful when it comes to mastering a final delivery. For that, it's better to use a loudness meter. Why? Loudness is perceptual. The way we perceive the loudness of a sound is dependent on its frequency and duration. For example, a low frequency will seem quieter than a sound at a higher frequency that has the same volume measured in decibels. In the example we just mentioned of a single frame of audio that is loud, the incredibly short duration of that intense signal means it won't sound loud to the viewer. As loudness meters take account of the way your mix is perceived by the audience, they are more suitable for use when mastering a mix for final delivery. In summary, because there are two primary methods for measuring volume, intensity, and loudness, there are two different standards that you can normalize audio to. Normalization helps you to deliver mixes with more consistent volume or loudness levels. Even if your video sounds good in isolation, it might be too loud or too quiet in comparison to videos that come before and after it. Normalization can prevent you from delivering mixes that are either too quiet or too loud then. Now that we have a better understanding of normalization, let's go back and look at those options. We'll focus on just a few. Sample peak is the simplest form of normalization. Volume is measured in decibels full scale. Remember though that your signal can still clip if it's normalized to zero decibels or near zero decibel values because there might be intra-sample peaks that won't have been revealed by a peak sample meter. If you are normalizing for volume, true peak normalization is a more robust option as it oversamples your signal to ensure that there will be no clipping in the signal path. This tool measures volume using dBTP, decibels true peak. We're more interested in the loudness normalization options though. It's a bit of a wordy name, but ITURBS17704 is a standard for loudness developed by the International Telecommunications Union, the same gang that brought us classic hits like REC 709 and REC 2020. Loudness is measured in LKFS. That stands for loudness K-weighted relative to full scale. You might have heard of this by another name. Fluffs. That stands for loudness units relative to full scale. It's essentially the same thing. This mode allows me to select a target volume level and a target loudness level. Particularly when working in broadcast, your client will have specific delivery standards that you can enter here. For example, companies like Netflix, Disney, Spotify, YouTube have published standards that they expect videos to be delivered in. 
Fortunately for us, these standards are already built into Resolve. I'm going to use the YouTube preset. You can see its target volume and loudness levels are already set to YouTube's published standards. Let's see how audio normalization affects my delivery. I'm going to make six deliveries, a normal mix, a delivery where the audio has been mixed too loud, and a delivery where the audio has been mixed too quiet. I'll then repeat each delivery with audio normalization enabled. Let's check it out. And for that, I'm going to pop my headphones on. To demonstrate the results, I've imported each delivery into this timeline and will solo tracks to demonstrate the differences. For reference, here is the normal mix. My mom still tells the story now when she was doing her residency in New By the way, to solo a new channel and remove the solo from the previous channel in just one click, hold down on Option or Alt while clicking on the solo button. New York City, you could always identify the ballerinas. You could see them on the subway, you could always. The normalized version of the normal mix has had a small amount of gain applied so that it hits the target loudness level. Now, next, the quiet mix. Tell a ballet dancer. My mom said that she always just thought, like, gosh, I want to have really. I can hardly hear it. And now, the normalized version of the quiet mix. Graceful daughters someday, which is kind of crazy. The normalized version of the quiet mix has had large amounts of gain applied so that again it hits the target loudness levels. And finally, here's the distorted loud mix. Because she did. The genre of ballet is far broader than people initially might think. It sounds terrible. And now, for the normalized version. Contemporary ballet, there's less of a tutu and it's about the physicality and the athleticism of Classical. The normalized version has been attenuated so that it hits the target loudness levels. The result is that all the normalized deliveries match each other. So despite my best efforts, my delivery sounds great. Please note though, best practice is to always manually master your mix to the target standard. In this instance, normalization was able to recover the quiet and loud signals without loss, but it's possible that certain operations can damage your signal irreparably. Before we finish, let's just talk about what normalization is not. Normalization will not help you mix your edit and normalization will not manage dynamic range. It's still up to you to set the volume of different elements in your mix relative to each other. It's also still up to you to use tools like compressors to reduce the amount of dynamic range and things like dialogue. So normalization is not the same as a limiter. A limiter is basically a really aggressive compressor that again affects the dynamic range of your mix. And again, it's still up to you to set up limiters to address issues like errant peaks. Remember, normalization applies a fixed amount of gain or attenuation to your entire recording. So, a single loud sound will cause the entire recording to get attenuated. While normalization on export does not absolve you of the need to properly mix and master your audio, you'll probably want to turn this cool new feature on for most exports. Who doesn't want more consistent deliveries? And if you're not working in a specific broadcast or digital workflow, for most digital and online deliveries, the YouTube preset is a good place to start. I love that this feature is now available in the Deliver page. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please give it a like. Subscribe so you don't miss future videos, and thank you for watching.